This recipe is for OT fruit cookies. So in my bowl, I've got 100 grams of caster sugar and 140 grams of butter. I've got 125 grams of dried fruit um, sitting in a little bowl. The only fruit I'd got in my cupboard today was actually dried cranberries. Otherwise, sultanas, I probably would have used sultanas if I'd had any, mixed fruit, glacé cherries, whatever type of fruit you like, as long as it's dried, can go into here. And on my plate for later, I have 125 grams of porridge oats and underneath the porridge oats somewhere, there we go, underneath at the bottom there, you can probably see that I've got 100 grams of self-raising flour. So to start off with, I'm just going to cream my butter and sugar together until it is light and fluffy. And I'm going to use a wooden spoon to do this today. You could use an electric mixer if you've got one. Because my work surface is quite shiny, I've put a um, damp dishcloth. You can use damp paper towel damp tea towel underneath my bowl while I just start creaming this fat and sugar together because I don't want the bowl to keep slipping. When you're creaming fat and sugar together, if you're using a wooden spoon, you just start by smashing the butter into the side of the bowl with your wooden spoon until you've got all of the sugar mixed into it. So I now can't see any more sugar in this bowl it just looks like butter it's not because the sugar is obviously started to get into the butter and now I can start beating this until this mixture is really soft light and fluffy so to beat it I'm going side to side and again the flat of my spoon is smashing the butter and the sugar into the side of the bowl and if you keep going in the same place what you should find is where you haven't mixed your fat and sugar in you can actually see where you have been mixing that your fat and sugar is lighter so I'm just going to keep going with this for a little while until my fat and sugar is nice light and fluffy okay my fat and sugar is nice and soft and if I tip my bowl and beat you can see it's really nice and soft and fluffy in there so I'm just going to get all of the mixture off my spoon make sure that it all gets incorporated bring it down from the sides of the bowl and then everything else is added into your bowl and you stir until you have one nice even mixture. So all of the dried fruit can go in. If you like, you can add your oats and flour half at a time. And I'm just gonna put about half in to start with. If you want to, you can put this all in in one go. And if you want to, you could add a little bit of mixed spice. You don't have to put mixed spice in but I'm just going to add a teaspoon of mixed spice to mine as well. And then just stir and keep stirring until this mixture is all one consistency so you can see that everything has been mixed in. And it goes quite quickly, as you can see, because the butter is nice and soft. The butter and sugar, oh, excuse me, are nice and soft. Try not to throw it all over the worktop. There we go. That's mixed up together. So I can now add the rest of the oats and the flour everything in here and when this is mixed up completely what you should have is a mixture that is dry enough for you to pick it up and handle because we're going to shape this with our hands rather than using anything else. 
so I just need to stir this up. There we go. And because it's nearly mixed and I'm going to be putting my hands in anyway, I'm just going to put my hands in for the last little bit and make sure that I get all of that flour mixture from the bottom. You can continue to do this with a spoon if you want to, but you've got to get your hands in it sooner or later and when you get to the end like this I think it's easier to just put your hands in, squash it and pick up the last little dry bits of mixture underneath. There we go. So you have a single ball of dough. Now the original recipe for this did say that this should just make 12 biscuits but I find it's a bit big as 12 biscuits. When they've spread in the oven I find they're rather large so, so I'm going to shape this into 24. Okay, to shape this dough into 24 pieces, what I'm going to do is cut it up while it's in the bowl. So if I cut it in half, then I know from each half I should get 12 pieces. I'm actually going to move that away from the bowl. So each half there should be enough to give me 12 biscuits. So again, if I want my biscuits to be a nice even size, if I halve that again, I should be able to get six biscuits from here. If I halve that again, I should be able to get three biscuits out of that piece of dough and three out of this piece of dough. And if you just roughly shape them like that, if you think you've got one which is too large or too small, you can add to it. So if I do the other half, so three biscuits from each of these pieces of dough. And that one looks a bit small, that one looks a little bit bigger. And you just pinch a bit off one and add it to another. And they are really easy to shape. Just get them in your hands, roll them into a dough, into a dough, roll them into a ball, Pop them onto a greased baking tray and just press them down lightly. So you don't need to press them a lot. What you do need to remember is that they are going to spread. So at school we probably would not make as many or as much of this dough. We might do half this amount of dough, 12 biscuits, because that's still quite a lot of biscuits to get in the oven when we've only got one baking tray and one shelf per student. So I think on this tray I can probably get six of these. So I'll just roll two more for the minute. And you notice I haven't put any flour down on my worktop. If you've measured this out correctly we should be fine without flour on the worktop. And then as I say I'm just going to press them down a little bit and give them space to spread and to rise when they go into the oven. So these need to go into the oven, gas mark five, for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna check them after 15 minutes and see how well they are doing. Okay, the biscuits have had just over 15 minutes in the oven and they are now a light golden brown colour. They are soft to the touch. All biscuits and cookies are always soft to the touch when they're hot. So again, they just need to be left for a couple of minutes and then they will be able to be taken off the baking tray. Um, these ones, I think I could probably have fitted a few more on the baking tray, but you can see how much they've spread from the original size of 
the biscuits. So make sure that you leave enough space between them for them to spread while they're cooking.